Eight part series Perfect Player premiering the 16th of January. JJ Berea, Tyson Chandler with a special greeting. Luka Doncic, special player. How's he working with Dennis Smith? I would say okay. Uh, speaking of JJ Berea, do we know his age? He just keeps playing. I, I, I love yesterday. watching him play, man. He's been around for a long time. I love watching him play. I saw Puerto Rico play yeah. in the U.S. and was like, oh, yeah. who, is, who is that little, oh, it's J.J. Brer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, He's boy. He's kind of good. Under 10 seconds to go in the half. Hart throws it up. Buzzer beating floater. And we're cutting it to 13 at the break. And Kuzma gets an assist for that bad pass. <laughs> <laughs> How about this from Doncic with the Ooh, step back? step back. Long. You want to create enough space for that? Yes. Deep Ooh. step back. Base. Mm. Lead eight. Brandon Ingram all over it. Aggressive. Was challenged after the loss the day before by Luke Walton to be more passionate. He was. Lonzo Ball was. Both had very good games. Ball had 21, seven boards, five assists. Ingram on the cut and the lay in. And a chance to be more demonstrative, no LeBron, and show that they can have that passion and performance. Well, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, Lonzo Ball took four shots last game. If you're going to go down swinging and you're the only primary ball handler, you yeah. should take more than four shots and, and just be aggressive. And you should be able to, if you're handling the ball that much and you got his kind of skill, you should be able to get more than four shots. Uh, Luka Doncic, uh, done, get a Band-Aid. Uh, Mark Cuban, uh, not happy. You should offer 25% over the Elvis. Ingram. Is he, the, is he the only owner that gets to come on the floor and talk to the referees? <laughs> I mean, he he's carved out a niche for himself. Like It's like Shark Tank going out there <laughs> to talk to the they referees. They cut you a deal. <laughs> I can get you some good products. Uh, a lead and a win. They take it by 10 to the Lakers. Ingram, 29 points, six assists, and two steals. And you look at where the Lakers are, and obviously uh, they were doing better than we thought that they were going to do in this kind of muddled Western Conference. Then LeBron gets hurt, and Rondo goes down, and they struggle. And Candace, here's Luke, he comes out and he says, I want to see more. And we saw that. Let's start with Brandon Ingram and the aggression tonight. Really, offensively, defensively, moving the ball, he displayed that dog a little bit more than we've seen lately from him. Well, Luke talked about it. It's not just about shooting the basketball. Mm -hmm. That's not what they need. This Laker team really started to become and grow into them their own when they were playing on the defensive end. Yes. I mean, one of the top teams in pace in the NBA, and that's how you get those opportunities are steals and, and turnovers and being uh, monstrous on the boards. Ingram, last game, wasn't aggressive on, on rebounding as well as he didn't get to the free throw line. Tonight, obviously, five of seven from the, from the free throw line, and, and uh, Lonzo Ball what, going one of four. But still, at least you're being aggressive in yeah. getting there. And, and the absolute best and fun way to play is get a miss and run. <laughs> I mean, when, when your defense is playing that way, you know, and you got rhythm on the defensive side of the ball, which I thought L.A. was able to get – in the second half, I thought they got a little defensive rhythm, and they were able to get out in transition. And when you're able to get a miss and run, that's a fun way to play. That's uh, the good news about the night. Uh, now let's show you the bad news, and that's the future. Um, well, Pistons and Cavs in there. Look, Thunder, Rockets, Warriors at Utah. Never an easy place to win. They got some tough games. I'm just Especially telling you. Especially LeBron's the, out there, they got some tough games. The, the Pistons are going to beat them. The Pistons always beat the Lakers. <laughs> you know who they don't beat? They're going to lose to the Pistons. Casey and I were like, the, you know, you know the who, Pistons always beat the Lakers. You know who they don't beat as they put the glass on? The Spurs. Do you want to see? <laughs> Spurs defense since December 6th. I, I mean, I don't even know what you say about what Pop is. Every, he has found different ways to find this group and make them better. And that, to me, is the mark of a great coach. Not just, here's what I do, you fit into it. He finds a way to fit into what he has. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, Dwayne Casey reunited. Okay, Detroit basketball. Little Blake Griffin. Jab step. Detroit basketball. Won't be screaming as much in about one minute and 25 seconds. Uh, Andre <coughs> Drummond 
the other way. Let's get the good <laughs> plays out the way. Let's Watch this. Go look, Pop. Timeout. That's uh, another timeout. Trying to ice the kicker, not the Bears, though. Uh, Blake Griffin, inside, leads it that too soon. Casey. That too soon? That, that was that, way that too soon. Right. Is that too soon? Yeah, that's yeah, that's sorry. Soon. I'm sorry, Candace. Tennessee's ranked number three. <sighs> DeRozan gets it to fall. He had 11 points in the half. This is a 20-2 to two run, Candace, for Spurs. And led by that man, DeMar DeRozan, that honestly is playing some of the best basketball of his career. Assists, points, rebounds. He's doing it all for the Spurs. Patty Mills. Had a headband, doesn't need a headband. I mean, either way, hits big shots. Lead eight at the break. Blake, though, big night. Zeke, 34 and eight. Yeah, Blake has been playing well. Not only has he been playing well, but he's been showing us all the things that we didn't get a chance to see with his ball handling here with Detroit that he wasn't able to really show a lot of it in L.A. Now, we saw a lot of this from DeMar in T.O. Dwayne Casey's seen this before. Uh, 26, 7, 9 assists. LaMarcus Aldridge... Okay, Tim Duncan off glass. He had 25 in the game and some hezzy. Uh-oh, uh-oh, stop and go. Pop ties Jerry Sloan's third most wins in NBA history. And again, they hold a team in big, t- every time they needed to stop late, they were able to get it. Actually, the Pistons, I mean, look, this is more balanced scoring than sometimes they get to be able to get 14 from Jackson, 13 from Bullock. I mean, the point guard spot, um, kind of a, a question right now, right? In terms of what's working for this team? Yeah, they, 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 got a, they got a big two in terms of Drummond and Griffin. But they're trying to, you know, find Jackson to, to insert into that and to get the, the big three back. Uh, you know, they've, they've lost seven of nine. Uh, and they're, 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 in a little, they're in a little funk right now. And I'm, a little, I'm actually a little worried about them. I'm hoping that they can come out of this. All right, well, I'm sure the Detroit basketball champ will help them. Let's take a look at the uh, Shut up. most <laughs> 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 Into the tied for third spot with Jerry Sloan and, of course, the great uh, Lenny Wilkins and Don Nelson. Congrats to Bop, who continues to go there. It seems like with every game, guys, there's a new – well, how did this guy do that? AD, another ridiculous talent. We'll break down the brow and the grind. Joe yeah. King was lit on that play. Not <laughs> Neil. The Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Utah Jazz. That game's going to be on NBA League Pass just minutes from now. You know, the Jazz have won two in a row, both on the road, three of their last four overall. Meanwhile, the Bucks are coming off a loss. And they haven't lost consecutive games this season. A perfect 10-0 following a loss. Let's hear Coach Quinn Snyder with Craig Bowlerjack prior to the game. This is game number 41 tonight. What's your thought? Well, it's, it's hard to believe. Uh, we were walking on the, the uh, just coming to practice and walking on the street today. And, um, you know, you still see some Christmas decorations. And Christmas seems like it was two months ago. So um, it's happened fast. And we're, um, you know, we're growing. I think we're, we're a better team now than when we started the year. And that's, to me, I know. You know, you'd love for the record to, I think you always want the record to be better. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, as we as we continue to play and tonight and the next game and beyond, if we can continue to improve, um, that'll serve us well. You know, speaking of getting better, listen, let me take you back to Detroit because you were down 18, but a dynamic second half, offensively and defensively. You guys are very active, and Donovan seemed to be the guy that led the charge. Yeah, you know, really, and, and you mentioned Donovan in the second half, and he certainly did. I think um, in the second quarter, um, really, when Dante and Tabo were in the game, the way those two guys played, and it was tough to see both of them, you know, take an injury because they, those two guys, you could really feel. Tabo played the rest of the second quarter. Dante had like five assists in six minutes and hard to lose them in that game and would have also been really easy with those two guys playing well for the rest of the team to kind of let up and and that didn't happen and you know Donovan as much or more than anyone um, really midway through the third quarter he came back in and he really dug in defensively and I think he just the game just started kind of unfolding for him and he was instinctive and he was really good. Yeah, he really was. Uh, Coach, uh, finally, we're in Milwaukee which is the home of Yantas Antetokounmpo and when you speak of him, I mean, just one word pops up. It's just unique. Yeah. Maybe you have more. Terrific, yeah. There's a lot of superlatives yeah. that you can use to describe him. Um, and Bud's done an unbelievable job, you know, helping him um, bring all those talents out kind of exponentially. But 
Um, some of the statistics that you see um, that are unique, nobody scored more in the point in the paint um, since Shaq. So you look at a guy and you know he's basically a modern day Shaq. He's not doing it with post ups all the time. He's doing it more off, you know, dribble penetration and transition. But um, he's a really unique player, and and that makes it it's hard because he's so good, but it's also hard because he's so different. Coach Snyder also mentioned Dante Exum's ankle injury. He's reportedly going to be out for the next two weeks. So before I ask you about their matchup with the Milwaukee Bucks, I want to ask why the slow start for the Utah Jazz, a young team that we were expecting to see take a big jump at the start of the season. I think a couple of things that jump out at me. When you look at their record right now, they've played 16 home games. They've played 24 away games, and here they are in Milwaukee again tonight. And the fact that they have a 20 and 20 record, just a game and a half out of the playoffs in the Western Conference, I think says a whole lot. The same thing is Donovan Mitchell didn't start out the season the same way that he finished up last season. But so did a couple other guys in the league that we've talked about tonight. Didn't start out great like James Harden, mm -hmm. but he's on fire right now. So if Donovan Mitchell gets back to the form that we saw last year where he was just simply sensational, and then a couple of these nagging little injuries where guys miss three, four, five games, you couple that with a brutal schedule, this team's in a great spot to make a run in the second half of the season. Let me ask you, Kevin, because you and I talk a lot about these young players who the team tends to, well, the league tends to figure out in their mm -hmm. sophomore season. Do you think that that's the case here with Donovan? No question. When you take the league by storm like Mitchell did, especially the second half of last year, Everybody now, you're the number one guy in the scouting report. So the coach stands in front of the group in the morning before the game and says, this is how we're stopping Donovan Mitchell. I'm putting my best defenders on him. I'm forcing him left. He likes to pull up. Whatever your tendencies are, they say we're taking your favorite tendency away, making you play to your, your weaknesses, not your strength. And I, as a young player in this league, it's like a chess match. You start off with the same opening in your chess match five, six times in a row. Finally, the guy says, you're not doing that. You're not beating me with that. You have to change up. I always, I've told this story before. I remember the first time I played in the playoff series against really talented players that were really smart, were Kywal Jones and Bobby Jones, and they played for Philadelphia 76ers. So I had to move right, fake left, turn around, fade away, jump shot. Hell, Bobby Jones jumped before I did. He blocked it. I mean, he just, I, I didn't have anybody block that shot, so I don't know when. And I was like, Dang, like I got to come up with plan B here. They made you play to plan B. They took away your favorite move, and that made me a better player. And I said that Donovan Mitchell early, earlier this year was going to look at film. Quinn's a really good coach, Snyder. He's going to figure out what the defenders are doing to him, and he's good enough that he'll go to plan B and C and get counters. So I think it's a tough schedule, like Mike said. And then I think it's just, you know, Donovan, the league caught up to him. Now he's figuring out what they're doing, and he's making, making the next jump. So it's just you're always doing this as a young player, and you're trying to get here. You just you do, you do this all the way up and he's just on his you know, just stages of growing up that ladder and they're taking on a Milwaukee Bucks team that's sitting 